I still feel honored and humbled and it's exciting, it's thrilling, it's also highly terrifying. <laughs> you know, I don't think any person sitting in this particular chair, even if it wasn't me, I don't think they would be like, yeah, I'm totally fine. Yeah. Um, there's a sensible amount of pressure because, you know, I was a Disney kid growing up. I love Disney, I love Disney animation. And in my adulthood, I've become a real fan of the art of animation. And so, like I said, it's an honor to lend my voice to this character who is beautifully brown with braids and freckles that is kind of helping to usher us into a new chapter of the Disney legacy and bringing an entire Disney magic that is all her own into the fold. Um, <laughs> tell me a little bit about who Asha is and kind of her goal, her greatest goal when we meet Asha. Well, Asha is a, let's say a quick-witted, but quirky, I call her a little queen, even though she doesn't know it yet. Um, but she's, she's a wonderful human who loves the town she lives in. She lives in the magical kingdom of Rosas. And when you, when you meet her, she's a tour guide. So she's bringing all that beautiful, beautiful energy. But ultimately, you know, she discovers uh, a truth about Rosas and about King Magnifico. And she goes to one of her favorite places in the world and she makes a powerful wish, even though like unbeknownst to her, she's not clear about what she's doing, but she makes a powerful wish and calls down the wishing star. And with Star's help, cause Star is its own thing, goes on this journey and ultimately is trying to fulfill this wish that everyone in her town, in her community, can, will have more than what they have now. That they can reserve the right to hopefully make their own wishes come true. And I think that's really cool. What do you think makes this film so special? You know, I think part of what makes Wish so special is that it's this beautiful way of celebrating the roots of Disney classics and also a way of, you know, launching us into the future. You have to be able to appreciate and celebrate where you've come from to be able to fully appreciate where you're going, right? Um, I think this film does that beautifully. It's an all new original musical comedy with seven beautiful new songs written by Julia Michaels and Benjamin Rice. And it's, you know, brought to you by the makers of Frozen. It has literally every element of a true new Disney classic. It's like putting all the ingredients in a, in a bowl, <laughs> mixing them up, and you get Wish. And I really feel like audiences, it doesn't matter who you are, there's something for everyone. You can truly see yourself in this film. Whether you see yourself in Asha, or any one of the townspeople, or Sabo Suino, or even King Magnifico. Like, there are elements of this that I think will be inspiring and heartening to so many people out there. Describe how Wish came to be and why it was the perfect film for Disney to mark 100 years. Ooh, that's an easy question. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll say the origin story of this story was um, Chris Buck and I working on Frozen 2 together back in 2018 and recognizing that we'd be turning 100 in five short years. Our films often take that long. So feeling we better get started because we want to do something really special. We didn't know what it was. Um, we started daydreaming. We knew we wanted to be big, epic, musical, fairy tale, comedy, all those big things we love about our legacy. But we also wanted to make sure it was an original so that it was still driving us forward. And wishing as an idea, um, it was something we could see throughout so much of our legacy, the power of wishing. Um, the wishing on a star, a dream is a wish your heart makes. Um, and I think wishing is a word that, you know, wishing to wish is such a simple thing, but it's an aim and every great discovery or adventure in the world has come with someone having a wish in their heart. And that was something to celebrate, but also to acknowledge and respect the incredible challenges um, that come with having a powerful wish, but the importance of you trying to make your own wishes come true. And what was the importance of Wish needing to be a musical? Well, I think you think back all the way to Snow White, 
if our first, you know, Walt's first film, and it that concept of the power of music and storytelling, but the way Disney animation does it in particular, where it is this beautiful, seamless part of the story that advances the story always, whether it's through you know great like discoveries in the in the in the um, in the song, or whether it's a learning more about a character moment or uh, helping you understand the deep emotion inside a moment. It's, it's in the DNA of Disney, and so it felt like a, it would be a missed opportunity if we didn't incorporate music as well. Yeah. Who wrote the songs for Wish, and why were they the perfect choice for this film? Julia Michaels um, and Benjamin Rice wrote the um, songs for Wish. What's so fantastic, especially Julia had grew up on Disney, classic films and musicals and loves them. She, she's a, a new generation of songwriters, but an incredible songwriter in her own right. So we knew it was a great combination of this um, understanding of our legacy, but also a completely fresh approach to music. And I think that's part of what we, we wanted is not to be just going backwards, but also going forwards at the same time. And she brings a beautiful contemporary style, as well as, you know, this, this sense of, like these films feel, these songs feel classic, and yet they, on their own stand, is very, very contemporary too. Introdu introduce us to the Kingdom of Roses. Where is it located, and why do people come from all over the world to be there? Um, the Kingdom of Roses was built by King Magnifico and Queen Amaya together. Um, off the coast of the Iberian Peninsula in the Mediterranean. And it was a perfect spot for them because what this kingdom was founded on is if you want to have an opportunity for your wish to come true, for your wish to be granted, we know how hard it is out there to have, your, to, to have this precious wish and how risky it is. Bring it here, we'll keep it safe, and maybe we'll grant it. You know, sounds like a great idea. Let's situate ourselves in a place where people from all around the world can get to us. And uh, so the Mediterranean Sea is a great place for that. So what was so fun is you really did have a kingdom that was built on a philosophy and people were, came by their own choice from all around the world. And uh, so it, it was just, it was just a, a, perfect, a perfect setting for that, yeah. Who is Asha and what is her greatest goal when we meet her? Asha is a wonderful uh, young ordinary teenager in the in the um, uh, in the kingdom of Rosas who she just wants what all you know she wants to hang with her friends and hey she wants to the internship maybe with the uh, to be apprentice with to the king um, but when she uncovers a a, a, a dangerous truth um, about the king and the the preciousness of the wishes of the people of Rosas. She wants more for them. She sees they deserve more. And so she becomes someone who has to find within herself the power to fight for what's right. And so she discovers not only is she an incredible leader um, and can she persevere, but she's one of the great helpers of the world who fights for everyone. What does Ariana DeBose bring to the character? Ariana DeBose brings incredible compassion and warmth like Asha. She cares about others. She cares about their needs deeply. She's grounded. She is a dancer, so she has a wonderful physicality that um, is imbued in Asha. The power of her voice. Asha is about, you know, she finds her voice. She fights for the things that's right. And to have uh, Ariana's incredibly powerful voice, singing voice, beautiful singing voice throughout the film um, is, uh, it, it's, it was just, I mean, she's, she's a, they joke, they call the phrase a triple threat. She's, I don't say, I don't say it that way. She's just an embodiment of all things that uh, you'd love from an incredible Disney heroine. Who is King Magnifico and what is he like? King Magnifico is a self-named, um, self-taught sorcerer, um, a man who, uh, as a young boy, saw his greatest wishes destroyed before his eyes and vowed to um, create a way for that never to happen again and uh, built a kingdom to protect others' wishes and grant them as he saw fit. Um, um, and uh, he really, uh, he's very charming and he's very handsome and he might know it, but um, he, someone where everything is great until he's challenged. And I always say, uh, you understand someone's real character when they are challenged. And uh, 
he, he makes some very difficult choices uh, when challenged that may lead him to a very dangerous place. And Chris Pine, he voiced Magnifico. What did he bring mm -hmm. to the character? Chris Pine is brilliant. He, is, he can sing. He's full of charisma. Um, his intelligence was an important part of the character. Uh, to be a sorcerer that great, it's, you're not easily fooled. Um, his curiosity, his, 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 uh, his want to understand the motivations in Magnifico drove us to understand them even more deeply. So he just was the perfect King Magnifico. Why does Asha turn to the night sky? How do we experience her plea and what happens as a result? Mm -hmm. When Asha was a little girl, her dad would take her out to, to dream under the stars and to say the star, he'd say the stars are there to guide us. And it was this, she'd look at the stars and they were this wonderful place of hope. So when she uncovers this horrible truth about the wishes, she turns to them um, in a desperate moment and in so doing wishes upon a star um, in that way her dad encouraged her that they'd be there for her and uh, in this case a star answers. Speaking on that, why is this wish such a powerful song? I think this wish is so powerful because it is a, what every wish really is to me is a, dec a declaration of an aim without even often knowing um, how you're going to get there. But it also is very special because it's not just a want song, it's a generous want song. She wants more for the, her family and for her community. Um, Asha does, and I think that this wish is really that true celebration of that spirit in, I'd say, you know, young adults out there who, when they wake up to the world, um, that isn't all they think it could be. Um, they're ready to stand up for the world they want to see. Who is Star, and what role does it play in Asha's um, mission? Star is this wonderful, chaotic light um, that comes from the sky uh, to help her. And but Star to me represents all the things you need along the way that are like hope, possibility, wonder, joy. That the stuff that allows you to accomplish what you need to accomplish, but can't do the work for you. Um, and so by by having this wonderful light that is silly and playful and thoughtful, we find those little bits of hope along the way, even as she's going through such a difficult time. And we always like to say, when you have a wish, um, as you pursue it, there will always be helpers, um, and sometimes unlikely helpers, but yeah. Last question. How does Wish embrace Disney's rich legacy while looking ahead to the future? I think uh, Wish is a true celebration of all the work of the artists um, that have come before us, of the things that Walt, were so important to Walt in terms of storytelling and entertainment and and um, hope and and he always said you know he'd love to Disney can help you connect the, to the child within at any age and I think um, Wish is perfect because it helps you connect to your wish again at any age um, and. I think that part of what makes it so great as we look to the future is it is still an original story. It's got a fresh approach to music. It's using the most advanced technologies, all the things that Walt also wanted us to do, which is keep advancing as storytellers and as innovators. What was the criteria involved in conceiving the film that would be a right story to tell us Disney's mark 100 years? So, oh, go ahead. <laughs> So we felt like what would be perfect to celebrate the 100th anniversary of this film was first to look back at our legacy. And that was the idea to pin up an image from each one of our films, put them on one bulletin board, get a look at all the history of it all, and see the different styles and all that we have done over the years. But what that led us to is then seeing this common thread of characters wishing on stars and so that became the inspiration we also felt like what was there guiding us and whispering is like it should be about wishing Vaughn introduce us to the kingdom of roses where is it located and why do people come from all over the world to join this community kingdom of roses is a magical place where there's a sorcerer king who has an ability to grant 
people's wishes. Um, so people come from all over the world, you know, I would too, if this place exists. And that is the main reason we pick a location as an island in the Mediterranean Sea off the coast of the Iberian Peninsula. So we can um, it make it believable that people can come from, from Europe, from North Africa, and multiple cultures can converge there. Chris, describe the research that was done and the deep dive into Disney's legacy that led to the idea of the Stars and Wishes. So in every film, we do, we do so much research, and we do scientific research. Some of the scientific research was studying stars. And one of the things that we found out that we are all made of stardust. And so we thought that's an incredible thing that connects us all, that connects us to the stars. And it also, as in one of our songs, it's called I'm a Star, where you get the idea that we all have that magic of the stars and the magic of the universe within us. We all have that power. Fawn, who is Asha? What's she like? And what is her greatest goal when we meet her? Asha is driven. She's a smart young woman, and she has a great sense of humor. When we meet her in the story, she is working really hard, practicing on her interview with the king, the great King Magnifico. She dreams of working for him because she believes that he does this great thing of granting people's dream, making their wish come true, and she wants to be part of it. But along the story, she discovers a difficult truth about Rosas and what King Magnifico is all about and have to make a decision whether to take a step and um, save her town from, from this forbidden magic. To further on that, um, Ariana Bois plays uh, Asha's voice. Um, what did she bring to the character? Ariana DeBose, she gave so much of herself to the role of Asha. She has such great energy. She is someone who's not afraid to be herself, and you really feel that in her performance. And we were so inspired by her movement as a dancer as well. And our animators met up with her and, and asked her questions about Asha, what she thinks about this character, how she would move, how she would talk. Um, and then they put all of that on screen into this character. Chris, who is King Magnifico, and what? how did classic Disney villains inform the character? So our, our wish on this movie was to create a villain, uh, a villain that, a Disney villain that we've loved all through our lives, but a villain that you knew was a villain from very early on. And so King Magnifico was created from that desire. <clears throat> he is, starts, he starts very charming. But then you suddenly see this darker side to him. And, and he's that character that you just love to hate. He is, um, he's a narcissist. He, he's very egotistical. But uh, he also is there to grant wishes. And so people, <clears throat> they're like, well, he is charming. He wants to grant wishes. But Asha's the one that sees. She pulls the, the veil off and finds out what he's really up to, who he really is. And that is her journey throughout the film as to sort of um, to stop him from what he's going to ultimately do. And Chris Pine voices King Magnifico. <clears throat> um, how, what does he bring to the character? So when we were starting with King Magnifico, we were thinking about who an actor, actors can be. When Chris Pine's name came up, we all just went, Yes, please, please say yes, please say yes. And we went to Chris because um, he gives that perfect charm. Um, he's a very thoughtful actor. And so he thinks about the role and he can go to that other side. So he can go to that villain side. So he, go, he has that beautiful range. And he also has an incredible singing voice. And so he had been in Into the Woods. He had been played the prince there. We knew his singing. The one surprise to us was... When we Googled uh, Chris Pine and singing, we found a video of him singing with Barbara Streisand. And if you can sing with Barbara Streisand, then you can sing. So we were sold. We'll stay with you, Chris. Describe the wish-making process. Mm -hmm. How old do you have to <clears> be? <throat> what happens to the wish when you make it? And what does Asha learn about it early in the story? Okay, so, <clears throat> so when people 
give their wishes to King Magnifico. He asks them, you know, to to make that true wish in your heart, believe in it, and that it actually comes out. He gives they give it to him. They're trusting him that he will grant that wish. Um, they forget the wish though, because what the whole thing is magic is that I don't want people to to think about it or worry about their wishes and keep striving. I want to make it easy for them. And I will grant their wishes. He promises to grant their wishes. What Asha finds out is that he is not going to grant everyone's wish. He There are certain wishes he feels like might be too much of a threat to the kingdom, too much of a threat to him. So he decides to grant only those wishes that will not threaten the kingdom and so or threaten it's more his power. So it's really all about him. So, uh, and that's the goal of the movie is Asha trying to find out how he, she can stop him and get these wishes back to the people. Who is Star? This is fun. Who is Star and what role does it play in Asha's mission? Star is a cosmic force made of things that we, we, we know in our world as imagination, hope, and possibility. Asha made a wish, right, and like we said earlier, there's a stardust in each in each one of us. So the stardust power connect Asha's wish to the actual star. When star comes down, star act as a catalyst to her character. Even though Asha might not feel like she's ready to pursue this wish, star pushes her, thrusts her into this action, allowing her to encounter many difficult journeys but also many self-discoveries of what she has inside of her and allowing her to become the leader she's meant to be. Chris, who wrote the songs for Wish and <coughs> why were they why were they the perfect choice for the film? So Julia Michaels and Benjamin Rice, they wrote all the songs for Wish. And why they were so perfect is that Julia is a is a big Disney fan knows all the Disney music and the Disney movies. Um, so she brought, which is what we wanted to do at the movie, is bring honor the legacy, but also honor the contemporary innovations and sounds. She brought both of that. She brought that beautiful legacy to the sounds, this kind of classic sound, and yet this contemporary sound that you've got, this another thing. So she was the perfect uh, person. They both were the perfect people to really uh, do everything we wanted to do with this movie. Juan, describe the song, I Am A Star. What happens and what are the creatures conveying to Asha? The song, I Am A Star, explains how a person's wish can pull down an actual star. But because star doesn't talk, it is explained through the gift of speech that star granted to animals, plants, all around Asha in this magical forest. It's a fun, fun musical numbers that, um, you know, within this song we meet so many of our old friends, animal friends from many Disney legacy films. Um, and it's meant to bring joy and hope and fun while speaking to the theme of the movie. Great. Who is Valentino and what's he like and who lends his voice to the goat? Valentino is Asha's pet goat who followed her everywhere. Um, he has a lot of op opinion, even though he wasn't able to talk yet. And one day, he was granted a gift of speech by Star. So Al uh, Alan Tudyk, our wonderful good luck charm, uh, brings the voice of Valentino, giving him the sophisticated, gentlemanly, fashionable goat to life. Valent Valentino believes that there is no greater joy than pursuing your journey, your wish. We talk about him believing that he loves to climb, but the peak is not, you know, it's, it's, it's not what's important. It's the journey of getting there, and he is not afraid to take that journey. Chris, we have one more for you. <coughs> Describe the look of the film. Why is it so unique and special, mm -hmm. and what were some of the inspirations behind it? So the look of Wish, it, it's, it's all new. Uh, but it pays, again, respect to our legacy, and it also embraces the new technology that we've been using the last few years. So 
We went back to Snow White, went back to Pinocchio for that gorgeous watercolor illustration look. And the, we also feel like that's like a storybook that just opens up. And so we wanted to create that, but the, the excitement was that now we have the CG medium. And so now you can walk into that storybook. You can walk into those illustrations and walk around them with that. And so we created that along with the characters that would match that. And it seems like just the perfect fit for this movie to honor everything that Walt had done and his artists had done and created and everything that our artists are working on right now. Here's one, one for you. How does Wish embrace Disney's rich legacy while looking ahead to the future? Um, Wish embraced the legacy through the beautiful watercolor look of the film. And uh, we embrace the future by telling the new original story with ca original characters and songs. And we create many new technologies to make this film possible. <laughs> and we hope that the new generations of filmmakers can take the, all the discoveries and, you know, f make many wonderful future awesome films. Why do you think Wish is the perfect film to release as Disney marks 100 years? Sometimes people ask us, why wish, why now, why in celebration 100 years? And I think uh, this movie uh, it will hopefully bring hope to the world and joy to the world, something I think is needed. Uh, and we do it in a way that also celebrates what it is that makes Disney animation so memorable. And if you look back on many of our films, they were all about joy and hope and uh, dreaming and wishing on stars. So I think this is the perfect movie to embody all of that. We're going to stick with you, Peter. Why did Wish have to be a musical? Who wrote the songs for Wish, and why were they the perfect choice for this film? If you think about celebrating the 100 years, very quickly we realized that we had to have uh, music, uh, because music and songs are such a big part of Disney animation. And we worked with uh, uh, Julia Michaels and Benjamin Rice, her co-writer, uh, be, uh, for many reasons. One, she's a big fan of Disney animation. It was such an honor for her to even be considered uh, to write the music. She's also the youngest uh, artist ever to write all of the songs for a Disney animated feature. Uh, so she not only loved the past, but she brought a contemporary uh, uh, feeling, which also helped it feel modern and, and pushed to the future. Juan Pablo. Describe the research that was done and the deep dive that went into Disney's legacy that led to the idea of stars and wishes. Well, the genesis of the movie from the very beginning started when Jen Lee in 2018 became chief creative officer and realized the anniversary was coming up. So one of the first research that we did was bring people from all over the studio together to talk about what Disney meant to them and what feelings it evoked. So words like hope and joy and wishing the stars came up, but we also created these uh, wonderful uh, boards with an image from each one of our movies. Chris Buck actually did this very early on, and uh, we had those images around us when we were brainstorming about Wish. So uh, the Disney DNA was always there. We also researched Walt Disney, uh, who he was, what he represented, how One Wish can change the world, which is exactly what he did and is what Ash is doing, but also more so references to him. Like he had a wishing, like a dreaming tree, for example. And that's why Asha is wishing on a tree as well. Or they say that Walt dressed up his animals in clothing. So that's why Valentino has pajamas. So the list goes on and on, but it was really exciting to be able to do research uh, looking inward uh, on the Disney legacy. We'll stay with you for a moment. Take us on a tour of Rosas. <laughs> Where is it located? Why do people come from far away to join this community? Well, when it comes to the world building, we thought it was very important to create a place that felt organic to the story. And what the story is, is that it's a place where people from all over come because there's the promise of getting your wish granted. And who wouldn't want to get their wish granted? So that's when in the Middle Ages, in that area in the Mediterranean between continents in uh, the south of Europe and the north of Africa, 
uh, it was just a place where a lot of people from different nationalities and communities organically came. And it also had that flavor of your classic Disney fairy tale. Uh, but it also felt different uh, because of the architectural styles that exist in that region. Describe the song Welcome to Roses and how it compares to classic musicals. Well, I think we all love the sort of opening song that yeah. sets you in the world. It, it, it brings you up to speed with where the movie's going to put, take place. Uh, we always say we're trying to create a believable world, not necessarily a realistic one. And this song does an amazing job of welcoming the audience in, giving them enough information so they understand the rules of the world, but doing it in a fun sort of celebratory way. Uh, Peter, who is Asha and what is she like and what is her greatest goal when we meet her? You know, Asha is like all of us. Uh, she should be relatable. She's she's not royal. She's like all of us. But she has a, a hope and a wish and a dream. And it's not s s uh, selfish. It's selfless because she what she's really hoping for is that everyone can fulfill their wish and they can get their wishes um, uh, returned to them. Juan Pablo, introduce us to Star. Um, what is Star's role in Asha's mission? Well, uh, the creation of Star was so fun and joyful, you know, because when you look at stars in the real world, they're there to guide us and inspire us. So we wanted that character to do exactly that, you know. We explored a version of Star where it talked, but it was giving Asha all of the answers, and we wanted Asha to make the answers for herself. So that's when we created this nonverbal character that's an animator stream, and, uh, and also inspired by the classic character Mickey Mouse, you know, in the heart shape uh, uh, form on its face. And, uh, and Star was also inspired by baby pandas. Jen Lee continued, uh, consciously talked about them and how they were fun and sometimes a little ADHD, uh, but, uh, but also a guiding force, you know? So it's, it's, it's fun, but it's also, it's also inspirational. Peter? Who is King Magnifico, and how did the classic Disney villains inform the character? I think very early on, we wanted to create a villain, a sort of a classic Disney villain. Uh, we haven't done that in such a long time. But this villain had something else, needed to be charismatic and charming, because you had to believe that people would come from all over the world, give their most precious hope, their most precious wish, to him for safekeeping. Uh, I think in casting Chris Pine, we found that perfect match of someone who can be very charismatic. Uh, uh, the character design, I think he's very handsome. He's also very self-aware of how handsome he is. But then you can watch him devolve into uh, a classic villain. Mm -hmm. Tell us about This is the Thanks I Get and how it follows in the footsteps of classic villain songs. Either one. Uh, Look, when Julia wrote this movie, it, 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 it seemed great. It's, it's a fun moment in the movie where Magnifico, uh, the people in the Rosas are questioning him. And he's never really been honestly questioned before. And so uh, in his opinion, he's done so much for the community. Why, why are they um, uh, sort of questioning him? And is this, is this how you thank me for all I've done for you? And one of our favorite things about Magnifico is that it's a character that you get to see him become a true villain before your eyes. And this song is that moment. Yeah. That's the moment where he makes the choice to go all in into the villainy. So it's yeah. a very exciting yeah. thing. Well, you kind of maybe touched a little bit, but um, either one of you can reach on this. Uh, describe Magnifico's magic and how it is a nod to the classic Disney villains. Well, uh, Magnifico's magic, uh, you have the good magic, which is more benevolent presenting, uh, but he also creates it with potions and stuff that you see in characters like the Evil Queen. And then you have the evil magic, which is your more traditional villain magic, which, you know, you see the shades of green. And there's a lot of nods to the villains of the past through his evil magic that people are going to need to pick up on. Peter. Describe the look of the film. Why is it so unique and special? And what were some of the inspirations behind it? Well, I think early on our production designers looked to some of the, our, the Walt's earliest films and also to the artists that Walt may have been inspired by in the past. And the idea of a of watercolor look, could we do a watercolor look where the characters actually can marry to the background and bring that watercolor painting to life? So that was the goal. And they built upon 
many of the shorts that we've done in the past, Paper Man, Feast, Far From the Tree. Uh, uh, and then we didn't know how to scale it up for a full feature. We didn't know exactly how to do it, but the artists working with technology um, uh, set that as a goal. And, and fortunately, they develop a very unique look for the movie that is just so beautiful on the big screen. Juan Pablo, who is Valentino? What is he like? And who lends his voice to the goat? <laughs> <laughs> Well, Valentino is just a joy, you know. Uh, you know, the animal sidekick in Disney movies is a very traditional thing. And with Valentino, we get to have the non-speaking character, but also the speaking character through uh, through Star's uh, charm and magic. And uh, Alan Tudyk was just perfect. You know, he is our good luck charm in Disney animation, so we knew he needed to be in this movie. And when we casted him as Valentino, we brought him in for his first session, and we didn't really know what he was going to sound like. So he helped us discover the sound. You know, he went really high. He went really low. And that's how Chris and Fun discovered the personality and the voice of Valentino. And Alan Tudyk helped uh, bring a lot of those one-liners. Jen and Allison wrote a lot of them. But uh, Alan, you know, he can ad-lib so well. So it's both so much fun. <laughs> All right, I'm going to start, Peter, with this, and then you guys can both jump in. Mm. Um, how does Wish embrace Disney's rich legacy while looking ahead to the future? You know, in, in, from the very beginning, we always wanted to say what really embodies a Disney film. And words like hope and joy and wishes and wishing on stars was part of it. But we also knew we wanted to create an original fairy tale with original songs and music and original characters. And I think it's the perfect blend of those two things where it, it is its own unique story, but those who are familiar with, with our past will also uh, be able to find many gems uh, uh, as part of it. Well, you know, a big part of, uh, of Disney is joy and hope, and we wish that that's the takeaway that people get when they walk out of this movie, you know, that they take that wish out of the drawer and embrace it and own it up and own it to themselves to, to achieve it and to pursue it. And even if you don't achieve it, it's all about the journey, you know, as we see what happens to Asha through the movie, she has to overcome so many obstacles, and that is... That is the wonder of Disney, you know? It brings you hope, and uh, that's what the world needs right now. Look, last night we had the opportunity to see the premiere in a theater full of people, and it's a good reminder of how important it is to watch the movie with others. You have a sense of community. You could feel the audience uh, get involved with the movie. It elevates, it heightens the movie by doing that. We made this movie to be in theaters. We made this movie to be on the big screen, and I think the world needs that right now. How do you feel about lending your voice to the villain in Wish, the movie that would mark Disney's animation 100th year anniversary? I feel incredibly privileged to lend my voice to the, the villain in uh, Disney's uh, anniversary film, their 100th anniversary film, Wish, with Ariana and Alan and Victor Garber and all these incredible talents and Julianne Benn, who wrote extraordinary music. and. Uh, Chris and Fawn and Jennifer, all of these extraordinary animated uh, veterans, uh, and specifically to play the the, the villain uh, and to add my name to a long list of, of, of really <laughs> famous ones is just great fun. What is your history with Disney animation? Like, what are your favorite characters, songs that you loved as a kid? Uh, I mean, Mowgli was a, a highlight for me. I always wanted to live in a forest with a giant bear as a best friend and uh, date Ariel and swim under the sea and uh, make wishes with Aladdin and, and Lady and the Tramp and, uh, and Fantasia, which is this extraordinary work of art that kind of goes above and beyond being something just for children into the stratosphere of like surrealist art. So I, I grew up with with Disney just like most, I think, children in the world have. Who is Magnifico? What's he like? And what's so special about the Kingdom of Roses? Uh, what is Magnifico like? King Magnifico is, uh, is, has got an inflated sense of himself. He thinks he's a pretty big deal. He doesn't have many friends. He's got uh, this poor wife that eventually sees the light and uh, uh, puts him in his place. Uh, he's a pretty insecure guy. He's very angry uh, and ultimately just kind of weak and, and insecure. 
uh, at the end. And this kingdom of Rosas, this kingdom of wishes that he's created where people from all over the world come and uh, give him his, uh, their wishes for safekeeping so he can make them come true, uh, is this beautiful spot somewhere in the Mediterranean in the 12th or 13th century. And uh, it's gorgeous, and he runs it uh, as his, uh, you know, as a, essentially a dictatorship we come to find. Speaking of his queen, what is Magnifico's relationship like with his, with his queen? Uh, his relationship, uh, you get a great sense that he leans on her for emotional support and validation. Uh, King Magnifico looks at his wife uh, for s the support which she gives him until sh her, uh, the veil uh, over her eyes is lifted to the man that he truly is. What truth does Asha learn regarding the king's intentions to, uh, for the most of the wishes? Well, Asha learns that, that King Magnifico is not, in fact, taking care of people's wishes. Uh, uh, he's granting wishes to make it seem like he's uh, doing uh, good work, but, in fact, he's stealing the energy of all of these wishes uh, for himself. What's the best part about playing a villain? The best part about playing a villain is the freedom and liberty to, to go play and explore and have fun and you don't have to be the straight man and the, the, the audience surrogate. You get to be all the fun stuff that you never got to play when you were younger. Tell us about This Is The Thanks I Get and how it follows in the footsteps of classic villain songs. Uh, this Is The Thanks I Get, which is King Magnifico's uh, big villain song. It was so much fun to work on with... with uh, uh, Julia and, and with Benjamin, they created this wonderful song uh, about uh, a guy that's spending a lot of the time looking in, in the mirror and is uh, upset that he's not getting the recognition that he should be getting from all the people that he's taking care of. Uh, so it's, it's fun, it's, uh, there's comedy to it, you get to see deep inside this character and really what makes him tick and how obtuse and kind of uh, not self-aware he is about it. Um, it's just a great song, and it was great fun to work on. Who is Star, and why is Magnifico so threatened by its presence in Rosas? So Star is a great character, and, and uh, uh, is Asha's uh, best friend besides uh, her, her goat, her talking goat. Um, um, she wishes for, she wishes so deeply that a star actually descends down and it's of such great power that King Magnifico realizes the power that he could have if he held onto star. But star is too powerful for that and in fact star helps uh, Asha realize how evil uh, this awful king is and with the help of her, uh, its powers is able to, to win the day. How did the filmmakers Chris Buck and Fawn Vera Swinthorne help guide your performance? They're my directors. They help guide it every step of the way. Between uh, them and Jennifer, they were able to tell me when I walked in the booth what they needed. You know, my job um, uh, is like I come to set and uh, am as open and free as possible, and then they guide me towards what they want. So I, I had great fun doing it with them. And why should people see Wish in theaters? Well, Wish in theaters, it's a visual uh, event, really, that shot in CinemaScope 255, this incredibly wide frame um, uh, image that they haven't done since um, Sleeping Beauty, something that's uh, really made for an audience. It's made to be seen on a big screen. It, it utilizes... Uh, old-fashioned water coloring like uh, Disney did back uh, in the day along with all the newfangled technology of 2023 all the CG so it's that combination that gives this kind of textural uh, immersion into the screen um, incredible songs that I hear from everyone that's seen it that makes people make people laugh and applaud and stand up as if they're watching a, a live theater event so I think it's designed specifically for families to go out and to enjoy themselves over the holiday season and see something with a great message. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and comment on the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to be notified when new videos are released.